How you doing guys? I was watching JW Suicides this afternoon and she had come across an article from Canada from the UC Observer and the article was about another survivor, another child abuse survivor and of course one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Well it caught my interest so I uh, looked the article up. If, uh, if for those of you who haven't caught the video or heard about the article I do have it right here and I'd like to read it. This in the midst of Pillowgate. This is why the criteria of Watchtower is just totally screwed up. Anyways, I'm going to skip the intro, but if the article starts off, my name is Melissa, and I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse from the ages of 6, possibly younger, to 14. And during that time, I was being raised a Jehovah's Witness. This is how Melissa begins her video blog divulging some of the horrific abuse she endured at the hands of her father while her family was living in Ontario and British Columbia. Her voice was trembling but filled with conviction. She talks for 23 minutes from her living room in Edmonton in November 2016. I will say my earliest memory is coming home from school sick, she confides. My dad went out and got me McDonald's. He said I would get it after we cuddled for a bit. Well, we didn't cuddle. At this point in the video, Melissa pauses as the weight of her words settles on the viewers. She doesn't share the nitty gritty, as she calls it, because nobody needs to hear that. Instead, she explains how the rules and structure of Jehovah's Witnesses allow the abuse to continue despite her mother reporting the situation to elders in multiple kingdom halls. My anger is more at the church than at him, now, the now 34 year old said in a recent phone interview. I know that I might sound some, I know that it might sound some ridiculous, but I'm the, I've only ever known my dad to have had a severe brain injury and that resulted in his lack of impulse control. I don't forgive him, but I do hold the organization more accountable. Melissa remembers how at 12 she disclosed to an elder what was happening at home. His response, she should keep quiet and respect her parents or else she'd bring shame on Jehovah. This scared Melissa, this scared Melissa because like all witnesses, she believed in Armageddon, an imminent battle between God and worldly enemies, that only God's true servants will survive. <clears throat> Melissa thought that if she mentioned the abuse again, Jehovah would literally kill her. So the preteen didn't reach out to anyone, even though she suffered from depression, to experience learning delays and felt isolated. I'm hoping that it will at least let others know that they are not alone, says Melissa on why she finally shared her story so publicly 20 years later. Her video has been viewed more than 17,000 times. This is an issue that needs to be taken seriously. It's very damaging. Okay. It's pretty apparent that this is an international problem. Not just in Canada, not just in the United States, not just in Germany, not just in Australia. But the way this organization is structured all over the world, it's literally turned into a pedophile paradise. Okay, more and more people know about this. We all know, know about it. I've known about it for several years. The only ones in denial of the indoctrinated Jehovah's Witnesses. And yet there are many Jehovah's Witnesses inside that are starting to realize it. Guys, you can look these articles up for yourself. If you want to see this article for yourself, if you go to JW Suicide's last video, it is in her description box. I just happened to come across it. I was curious. And to say that this is isolated? No, this is not isolated. This is one of many. This is why in Canada, the Watchtower is facing a $66 million lawsuit 
they're still paying $4,000 a day for not turning over the database to the authorities, so much for sub subjection to the superior authorities. We, they would rather pay the $4,000 a day fine than to turn over these pedophiles to the authorities. Yet what has been the big news from Watchtower this week? And thank you to the person within Watchtower who leaked the video. And yes, I'm talking about Pillowgate. What possessed Watchtower to produce the most ridiculous video I think I've ever seen? And Mabo Mosky, I have to agree with you. Uh, I thought it was bullshit myself. I mean, I couldn't sit through the entire video. I had to watch it in shifts. I just, just couldn't believe what I was hearing. And we all know that Watchtower has put out some ridiculous videos before. And obviously, this particular video was not for the rank and file Jehovah's Witness. This was for the Bethelites. And I'm beginning to wonder what happened at Bethel that, that the governing body felt it necessary to produce such a video. Did they catch somebody fondling their fudgies? Did they catch somebody hoofing a pillow? I mean, demonizing pillows? Pillows, guys. Pillows. Uh, the bedroom rules I thought were always ridiculous, but now you have sleeping rules as well. What do you want them to do, sleep on a bed of nails? I uh, actually couldn't believe this. Or oh, was this the input of the new guy, Ken Cook, on his first Wednesday afternoon meeting? Hey guys, let's try this. Uh, I'm just wondering how many of Jehovah's Witnesses actually watched that video. And guys, are you not seeing through this BS, okay? With the severity of the child abuse problem in the organization, you've got your higher-ups demonizing pillows, okay? I mean, guys, really, can you get through the fog? Can you through, see through the BS and realize what kind of organization this is? They're addressing pillows, for God's sakes. Pillows are now the major problem at Bethel. Okay, I think you've got a lot more problems at Bethel than you're willing to admit. We all know about the Bethelite who was at the airport uh, following little boys into the bathroom and giving them nude pictures of himself along with his phone number. Okay, and you're addressing pillows? Get real. I mean, guys, it is ridiculous. Jehovah's Witnesses, wake up. Okay, you are in such a ridiculously corrupt organization. And if you want to live with your head in a little bubble, I mean, that's entirely your fault. But guys, by the time the end of the system comes, that organization is going to be long gone. And it's not going to be when the world empire of false religion gets attacked, because this organization is going to be gone long before that. But guys, if you'd like to read that article for yourself, I do not have it in my description box. But if you go to JW uh, Suicide's video... It is in hers, her last video. And take a look at it for yourself. It's quite a bit longer than uh, mo what I've read. But uh, most of what is in there are things that we already know. But you may want to take a look at the article yourself. Anyways, guys, that's all I've got for today. I'd leave your comments below. I'd like to hear from you. And I want to thank my subscribers. Guys, thank you much for supporting my channel. And if you come across this video, hit the notification button. That'll let you know that I'm out here. Okay, guys, I'll talk to you soon. You have a good day.